My name is Steven Strocker. Um, my background is I'm an MBA and CPA. Um, in uh, 1992, I moved to California to start up a home infusion pharmacy, which is IV medicines that we mixed and delivered to patients at their homes. Um, we ran that uh, business for 14 years, ultimately selling it to a national provider, a publicly owned company named Option Care Inc., which is now actually part of Walgreens. One of the major challenges we had was about, oh, I'd say about four years into the business, um, the woman who was our head pharmacist and had a lot of our um, referral contacts, uh, I found out through some other people in the office that by accident they discovered a partnership agreement that was going to start a company in competition with ours. Now, she wasn't named as one of the partners, but the two partners named were her sister, who was actually a physician, and a, a nurse that we use quite a bit in our business. Um, but it was clear that the, the woman who was our pharmacist behind it, um, I actually received that information at home on a Friday afternoon. I hadn't been into the office that day. Um, on Monday, I called all three of them into the office. We always had a meeting on Monday anyway. After uh, Jeremy and I called him in my office and I said, confronted him with the facts that I had learned. And I said, well, basically fired them because I knew I didn't want to support them and pay them while they were actually planning to go into competition with us. Uh, it was a hard thing to do because a lot of our business uh, was generated by the woman who was the pharmacist. Um, but we got through it, we recovered, we, we uh, increased our other marketing efforts and kept the business growing and thriving until we eventually sold it. So that was a, a big challenge we faced. It was, uh, you know, a little uncertain future what, uh, how important this person was to the business. But I guess the lesson is that there is nobody in a business I think who is totally irreplaceable. Um, you just have to uh, face the facts sometimes and do what you really need to do to keep the business going and to, to make it thrive. We started the business, as I said, in 1992. Uh, we were actually an outgrowth of a home, uh, nurse, home health agency which does nursing services, physical therapy services. Uh, some of the owners of our company were also owners of that company and they actually managed it. And we were able to fund it through, through money from that, uh, that company uh, to give us the capital to start the business. And we were actually pretty self-sufficient. We didn't have to actually go for any outside financing for several years. But as, the, as we grew and our revenues get up, went up, in the healthcare business it takes a long time, a uh, pretty long cycle to collect all your receivables. So we eventually went for bank financing with, with um, uh, commercial banks uh, to keep us afloat. And uh, it worked out pretty well. My method of motivating uh, my employees and people was really to have a, a good culture in the company that they cared about. I always made them sure that they knew they could approach me with any ideas, concerns they had, and, and by following the principles, and I was, I'm always the person who led by example. I always say to people, I don't impress them by what I say, I impress them by what I do, and I take the same attitude to people who are working for me. I, want that, I wouldn't expect them to do anything I'm not prepared to do, and I, I think I, I lead by example, which I, I think builds uh, employee morale and, and makes them committed to the company and its mission. New entrepreneurs who are ready to start their own businesses. My, my first piece of advice would be really put in the effort. It's not a part-time job. It's uh, 60, 70 hours a week at the beginning because you're, you're really going to be the force behind it. You have the vision. You're the one who has to make that vision get realized. So it's going to take a lot of effort on your part, but the rewards are worth it. You, not only monetary, but also the psychic rewards of, uh, of actually starting some uh, having some idea and following it through and making it into a successful enterprise. Uh, it's going to take a, a lot of, uh, as they call it, sweat equity. You have to really get involved in that business.